calls coming in. We love hearing from you. And the three best opinions today will win a prize, which is for my next guest, Freddie Lee. We do have a clip of his show coming up in just a moment of him performing, but let's just meet the guy right now before we go for the first 30 seconds of that clip. Freddie, how are you? I am absolutely wonderful. Tell me, tell me again, where were you born? I was born in Pahokee, Florida, just uh, 65 miles west of West Palm Beach. So Florida. we were just talking before, that's like south, south, because you can south. tell from your accent. Yes, yeah, definitely. It's dirty south, as we call it. I absolutely <laughs> love that. Now, you have a Rex of Riches story. You're, yeah. you're an amazing singer today, bags of talent. Mm -hmm. album out right now. You've done some work in the States, you yeah. over here in the UK promoting a new album. Yes. Tell us a little bit about where you came from. How did it all begin for you? How did it all begin for me? Um, back in Pahokia, like I said, it's a small area, very small. And uh, like most situations, it's very high percentage of rates of crime. Mm -hmm. And it's just a, a sort of kind of bad situation to, you know, we can't help the situation we were born yeah, into. Yeah, yeah. But uh, in, in saying that, it was through music and working in the band, high school band, singing in the choir, in the church. These are the things that gave me the opportunity to, I think, more or less focus on my talents and to sort of, sort of like sharpen my craft to become a better entertainer. Yeah. And from, from there, I went off to university. Uh, Thank goodness, and uh, graduated with two bachelor of science degrees, oh, wow. one in management, LA science management, and another in business management. And um, in doing that, I was also involved in entertainment as well, and I uh, toured all over the Caribbean uh, and all parts of just about all over America, uh, singing with the choir called the Ambassador Corral at the Florida Memorial University in, in uh, Miami. And that situation gave me the opportunity to come abroad. And one of my friends uh, got the opportunity to say, Fred, listen, there's an opportunity to come to go to Spain. And I decided to say, hey, you know, I've gotten my education, and I think that's the most important thing. Now I want to go after my dreams. You know, if, if, if in fact nothing happened, it doesn't work, I can always go, go to work. But you tried. Yeah, and I, and I, you know, tried. And I don't want to have it on my mind, what if, what if, what if exactly. 15, 20 years later. And in doing that, I come up with some guys, and the group was named Message. We were a contemporary uh, gospel group at the time. But due to disagreements and all of that, as we boys do, egos uh -huh. and all of that, becoming successful in Spain, things kind of broke apart because I was kind of, I was really put in a bad situation. And even after coming over here, I find myself in a homeless situation. Um. And I lost everything. I was literally sleeping out of my car, riding up and down the road, sleeping out of a car. And in saying that, the opportunity came along where uh, I had a meeting with some people who heard about some of the things that I had done for this, like putting different shows together, because I do a lot of tribute shows, and I mm -hmm. produce a lot of shows, like uh, for Motown and all oh, of that. I even perfect. had people come over from uh, Gamble and Huff from Philly to have a look at some of the stuff that I had done. But in saying that, uh, one guy that I find to be a friend knew me. I told him a situation through another friend, and he literally gave me 5,000 pounds. Say, listen, I believe in what you're doing. This guy from BCM Promotion, Ray Martin, i never forget it. And this guy is the person that made it happen along with another friend of mine. When you keep hold of a belief that you've got, oh, yeah. opportunities will come your way, and you know that it is meant for you. It is meant. And it's exactly what happened to you. So, Karen? And through that, the opportunity to come to put together this show called The Sound of the Four Talented, The Sound of the Drifters, and even in that, a lot of the choreography, because I choreograph a lot of these shows, and some of the stuff I choreographed maybe 10, 12 years ago. And even in saying that, you know, we call it haters. A lot of haters, you know, the new terminology people are using nowadays, people impeding yeah, on your, your yeah. pursuit of happiness. Yeah. But because of our haters, thank God for them, they make us better. People are still going away, even to this day, uh, infringing upon a lot of my copyright from a lot of the choreography that I have done to this day. And I got two major theater tours right now are in breach of that. I won't say who they are, but, mm -hmm. but I'm in a, a legal battle to try to take care of that. And in saying that, it brought me to this juncture where I've been approached by other uh, production companies to produce, to do, what do. to do what I do now. I mean, speaking of, I mean, we're going to watch a clip of you in, in mm -hmm. just a moment, but speaking about what you're doing, following your dreams, I'm just going to step a little bit off, off, off okay. what you're doing, but 
linked to exactly what you've just told me. Mm -hmm. You're a strong-minded person, Freddie. You've oh. got, you know, you went through different scenarios to get to exactly where you are today. Mm -hmm. Michael Jackson, on the other hand, oh yeah, has earned a tremendous amount in his life. Oh yeah, has done an amazing amount in his life. Mm -hmm. Has given so much to the music industry, uh -huh. if, if everything from the start. Yeah, who's to blame for what happened to him through the day? You know, and there's a clip on the on the internet now from mm -hmm. the Pepsi commercial which she right. was filming, and it came out that the day he burned his hair, that's the day he started becoming addicted to to painkillers. To painkillers, okay. Is that true? Is that what addicted him? People are saying, you know, people have been controlling. Mm -hmm. What happened to Michael Jackson? Um, As somebody, you're in music, so you can see what um, happened behind the scenes. In my honest opinion, and 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 looking at the whole scenario mm -hmm. of the Michael Jackson situation, like I said earlier, each and every one of us in this business, guy, we come from different situations, different backgrounds. There's different things. It's hard to say that because what happened on the Pepsi commercial, that's the thing that led him to being on painkillers. My point of view, the people in your entourage and the people around you, these are the people that are supposed to keep you grounded. These are the people who are supposed to protect people like myself, Michael Jackson, to make sure that the type of thing that happened to Michael didn't happen. My point of view, if, in fact, the person who was responsible for giving him medication, their responsibility is to make sure that he's in a healthy physical state and mental state of mind yes. and say, listen, we love you, man. We are not going to, you know, you got some people that, you know, we call them, you know, brown noses that would go along with anything someone mm -hmm, say just mm -hmm, to, mm -hmm. to get their props. But in saying that, we are supposed to protect one another and say, no, don't do this. Don't take this medicine. Yeah, don't take this shot. You're, you're, you've been on tour before. Yes, you I have. know the demands that happen backstage oh, personally. Oh, my God. Yeah, oh, yes. Can you oh, yes. imagine doing all of that, being constantly under the influence of strong, strong. drugs? One yeah. of the drugs yeah. he was allegedly using was used for anesthetics. Yeah, yeah. Can you imagine what the impact it would have on someone who is as in demand Man. in the entertainment industry as Michael Jackson? As Michael Jackson. And I can, I can only imagine that at some point in time, even though sometimes we are in demand, I think someone in his camp should have said, listen, yes. and stop being money hungry or money grabbing and say, listen, if, in fact, you don't want to be the golden goose, and we know what the end result of the golden goose is, basically, that's basically what happened. Yeah, yeah. In terms of saying, we got to protect this man we got to protect him in the sense of not allow anything to happen to him on a psychological or physical level with medications or what have you. And, and bear in mind that he's got a family, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you Absolutely. know, and to try a to big it, family a big that. family at that. And yeah. I can understand that what they are going through and trying to get down to the bottom of what happened because a person like Micah Jackson and the way the things took place. Many people say that shouldn't have never happened. Exactly. How exactly. could that happen to Michael? Exactly. We were saying before, you know, surround yourself with people that matter to you no matter what mm -hmm. career line you're going into. We want to hear from you guys. If you've got an opinion on what happened to Michael Jackson, what happened in the last few days of... Did, was it an accident? Did Michael mm -hmm. Jackson die in terms of an accidental scenario? Was it just simply a straightforward heart attack? Or was it the people around him that caused something to happen along the way that ended Michael Jackson's life? 